First speaker is Professor M. C. Arunan from Homi Bhava Center for Science Education, TIFR Mumbai. Professor Arunan, uh, after his master's and PhD from Bits Pilani, he was at the Department of Life Sciences in Sofia College for Women in Mumbai uh, from 84 to 2015. And from 2010, he was associated with the Homi Bhava Center for Science Education as a consultant. And since 2017, he has been with the H HBCAC as a Kishore Bharati Fellow and uh, visiting scientist and has been closely associated with the development of collaborative undergraduate biology program. Uh, Professor Arunan. A very good morning. So I, I think you can see the first slide. We are waiting for the spectators. <laughs> okay. Uh, very good morning. I'm very grateful to the organizers for inviting me. Uh, I think I will not take any other more time for formalities. Uh, Thank you. So anybody can guess uh, what is it, who is it? Anybody in the audience can guess this? So this essentially Venkat Raman when uh, Ramakrishnan when Venkat Raman when he was a student in the US when he first went in seventy two. Anybody can guess? Of course everybody can, is it not? So the point is can Indian science learn from Indian street cricket? Do we have involved spectators in science and science education? So the idea is knowing the rules of the game enables people to be involved spectators and actors. Lack of facility is no, no bar. Improvisation galore. I don't think I had to make a comment on this, other than that locality laps of cricket. The same feel, probably, of a test cricketer. Anywhere, everywhere, all type of improvisations. Why do we need facilities for science if facilities for cricket is so much easily improvised and so beautifully with fun? So where are the spectators for Venkat Ram and Ramakrishnan? Where, where were they in 2009 when he got Nobel Prize? I think most of us sort of ignored in science and science education area. Uh, so I, I think I will have to stop for a minute to talk about, uh, mention about a few things. Uh, Venkat Raman Ramakrishnan got Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2009 for working in biology, ribosomes, and he was a physicist. And we have compartmentalization even in biology as zoology, botany, microbiology, life sciences. Uh, we don't talk to each other or any other idea. So my topic is something like this, populating India with uh, STEM spectators, science, technology, engineering, mathematics spectators, Cube's uh, gully cricket, street cricket model. So Cube is a, a program that we started six years ago in Homi Bhava Center for Science Education. So I'll be illustrating, I'll be using that as a model in order to illustrate how we can probably get active, involved spectators. So we started CUBE uh, in a very, very unassuming way in Homi Baba Center. This is actually a, a green room of an auditorium, of the main, main auditorium. Uh, though offers were there that we could go to a better place, we insist that it should be here because it's much more informal. Uh, so the idea is from curiosity to frontier science. I think I'll be giving some examples of that. Uh, you can see that though we started CUBE as 
collaborative undergraduate biology education within no time a large number of school students and even teachers and research scientists joined us so it's no more collaborative undergraduate research program undergraduate biology education it's uh, we had to we perforce we had to change uh, or look for a, an expansion of the abbreviation uh, so one of them that we are thinking of is collaboratively understanding biology education and uh, in no time that uh, we have been approached by physics uh, chemistry maths people in fact we have been also thinking of doing that in order to extend it to physics chemistry maths which essentially means probably cube will not will be a misnomer there so anyway i'll, I'll come to that in a minute so this is a little old uh, map where we have so the idea is to network uh, okay when we started 6 years ago 2012 uh, uh, the the number of undergraduate colleges were somewhere around uh, 22 in the record but i think it was 30 30000 around uh, so the idea was to network uh, these colleges across the country and in link it to schools at one level and research scientists at another level so the, this uh, these are the spots where we have centers and some of the centers are uh, need not necessarily be a college or a school some of them we call it as something like locality lab i was mentioning about the the, the girls playing cricket street cricket so we have something like that that's happening in different parts of the country uh, i think i'll give you an example what that's happening right now now this is the pea season pea pod you know pea mutter season and people have been this is actually a case from one of the schools from kanpur uh, in fact two schools from kanpur uh, who are part of the q program so when while they were uh, somebody from at home have been uh, peeling the the pea pods and they you can see the second one the, the lower down one has got a caterpillar so they didn't uh, ignore that they started looking at it what's happening to the caterpillar so caterpillar turned brown so they thought that they wanted to find out whether the caterpillar is going to be a moth or a butterfly uh, incidentally some of them are also looking at making a butterfly garden in their school uh, what happened was that uh, the caterpillar did not survive on the other hand some other some other insects came and laid eggs on that and you can see the bottom one there are some larvae some some larvae the white one is a larva so some other butterfly some other uh, insect uh, laid eggs on this and the the larvae emerged and they didn't stop at that they were they were looking at that this is currently that's going on and then they found that uh, it gave rise to that small spots on the right side that you are seeing on, on the left side probably uh, you are seeing are the the pupae of the new insect so that means a succession of insects uh, you witness here uh, they are also playing around with it on the palm uh, so the succession of these insects all of a sudden well they were along with many other people who are interacting with them through instant messaging system they came to know that it can be used as a forensic entomology model in fact this type of studies have been done in forensic entomology so in a, from a school that we are developing a model for forensic forensic entomology so it essentially means uh, a dead body which is not identified maybe it discovered after 10 days or 15 days or so so if one has to find out when is when is the 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 murder or whatever the accident took place uh when when did it take place uh they will look at the the insects the the beetles insects etc that's growing on that and then go back find out its uh, life cycle and go back and find out which day that it could be uh, the 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 corpse was uh uh or or the dead body uh, the the, the organ this became a dead body so the one of the uh, from that current contemporary studies uh, students from different parts of the country interact and then they found that there are some uh, studies that has been going on so this is i hope the, the the understanding that i got about insect entomology sorry the forensic entomology also came from students uh, telling about us finding out literature from Uh, by doing google search so you can see that the use of insects for in for forensic investigation and overview on the scope and scope 
of forensic entomology. So there's an article that came. So this is also on their own, they have been able to search. Not the school students. This is actually found by somebody else, uh, some other student from uh, some, part, some other part of the country who, are, who is a participant in the cube. Uh, so this takes us to uh, the inspiration that we got uh, when we were to start uh, this type of program. Uh, Obeid Siddiqui, who was the head of, uh, who started uh, NCBS and who was the head of uh, Molecular Biology Unit in TFR, he has been very close to us, or we have been very close to him. And uh, he used to talk about this sophistication required. When everybody talks about the facilities, not there, etc., he used to say that, you know, you don't have, facility will come if provided we have, or facility, or sophistication of the lab will come provided we have sophistication in mind, in the mind. Uh, 2010, 2009, 2010, in the U.S., there has been a huge extensive study of on how to improve higher education, undergraduate education, uh, the vision and change uh, report, which one of, the, one of the points that inspired us was that education should not be something that we teachers do to our students, but it should be something that we do along with our students. Uh, these were the election times. I think the election, uh, four or five states went, went through election. Uh, so the voters mark is, uh, uh, is an occasion for students, the, the CUBE students, to look at and find out whether something can be done about it. So this actually, 2017, when the general, 2014, when the general election took place, some, some students started doing that, tried to see whether they can study the, the growth of the nail. But the growth of the nail, when they were looking at it, all of a sudden they found very interesting stuff. Uh, the, it's not just mere growth, there's a lot of, lot of developmental stages uh, of stem cells under the nail. Uh, so what uh, they were doing that, doing, and uh, currently many of the centers are doing, is to develop uh, an instrument to measure it, say a simple instrument to measure it, by, by using a graph paper. And of course developing it better and better, uh, a lot of questioning takes place. Uh, so this is, uh, this is probably one of the well-accepted sort of instrument. Uh, you look at, uh, again, the connection from the, from the curiosity to the frontiers. Nature 2012, I think, 2013, there was a paper which says uh, how nails regenerate lost fingertips. If you have an amputation of the finger, but uh, part of the nail, is, nail, nail bed is there, the, that part of the, the, the fingertips can regenerate. Uh, so this is uh, countrywide uh, different activities. I think we should not. You can see this all uh, very very young students to uh, teachers are participating in that. Uh, this is uh, the first uh, on the left side is uh, Obaid Siddiqui when he almost started uh, molecular biology unit, and you can see several several people engaged in that. Not not very important. Okay, so uh, it, it starts from curiosity. But something very interesting takes place. So this is a story where, uh, where uh, some of the students uh, got some samples of water and brought it to Homibawa Center. For the, in fact, the first batch of students, they brought some samples of uh, water and they were, they were thinking that there will be algae there. And fa in fact, there were algae, but all of a sudden they found that there is a, there is a small, in small uh, crustacean, something like a small prawn type organism. And uh, they started culturing it by very simple method, of they, they found out that uh, it eats uh, bacteria. So to provide bacteria, they add a drop of milk in a, in a half a bottle of water. Uh, uh, yeah, bottle of water, plastic bottle. Uh, and it, every, every day they give that, and uh, the, the animal which is called, which we all thought that it's Daphnia, which is uh, generally in biology, people use it for some experiments or the other. Uh, Daphnia has been growing, and then people found that uh, from one single Daphnia without mating, they can reproduce, so it's, there's an asexual way of reproduction. So they started making a stock of that from a single animal, so that means they know that it's of a single species, and they, start, they started calling it as, a, as a, the chosen species, chosen Daphnia species. And uh, it went from Bombay to, in fact, from a college in Bombay it came to Homibaba Center, and it went to different parts of the country. And these students are, uh, we call students, we don't call them students, we call them cubists. 
these cubists are uh, from Delhi, one of the colleges in Delhi. And they were, uh, so this, is, this has been called as the Daphnia species, chosen Daphnia species, but one of these girls, uh, cubists, uh, wanted to really find out whether it is really Daphnia or not. And she, with uh, some, uh, some collaboration with others, she found that it's not. It's another genus called Moina. Now, the story didn't stop there. Of course, uh, they also found some very interesting thing that uh, this, if you put a bit more milk in that bottle, let's say instead of one drop in 250 ml, if you put some six, four drops in 250 ml, uh, the, the animal becomes red. Uh, so that is because of hemoglobin production, because the hypoxic condition causes hemoglobin production. So they wanted to see that whether uh, there is a chromosomal remodeling that is taking place. These are all first year, second year BSc students, first year, second year, third year BSc students. This, the girl who is standing in front is Kajal, who is uh, now a master's student. That time she was a second year student. So she was the one who identified that. She, she worked along with others to identify that it's, a, it's another genus called Moina. Interestingly, this took some two years or something. Till that time, everybody was talking about Daphnia across the country, uh, the Cube network. And uh, so when she insisted that this is Moina, it was very difficult for other people to accept it, including us. I think uh, Nagarjuna sitting here probably still calls it Daphnia. <laughs> uh, now, the story didn't stop there. Uh, somebody who finished uh, her uh, BSc from this group went to do MSc in Mumbai University, and uh, she took it there in order to address the question of chromosomal tree modeling during uh, the differential gene expression. Uh, one of the teachers there was interested to look at uh, whether it is really, she can really do molecular ta taxonomy to establish which type of Moina, whether it is Moina or which type of Moina it is. So they did a molecular, uh, you know, barcoding and uh, you know, very, very uh, frontline stuff. Uh, they did that and they identified it as a particular species. In fact, a strain which was not uh, there is a variation in that. So they call it as JSK, JSK1. So from almost nothing in six years, they have got a complete picture of an animal through various stages of development by students collaboratively and uh, submitted in Genco, GenBank. So they are writing a paper to publish it now. So this is, uh, these are some of the stories. And uh, now we have uh, another, st another story, uh, mango. Now, currently, this is uh, December. If you look at the mango trees, I have been looking at the mango trees here, and hardly any mango trees are flowering. Uh, but uh, if you, if we've been to Vijayawada, Andhra Pradesh, there were some mango trees flowering. We get a lot of uh, uh, report from uh, South India, rest of the South India, let's say Kochi, Trivandrum, uh, etc. There the mango trees not only are flowering, in fact, started flowering early, uh, earlier. In fact, this study has started uh, somewhere in 2015, and this is a map that we got it uh, in map made in February. You can see that uh, the, the, the yellow ones are the flowering ones, the green are the fruiting, uh, and the gray ones are neither flowering nor fruiting. So this is the data that is coming from uh, across the country from, by people, students, and parents, uh, and their relatives. Some of them are j just joining because of that. So it's, a, it's becoming a real people science movement type of thing. And the interesting thing is that latitude-wise, if you look at it, I think we even know this. Uh, uh, North Indian mangoes come to Bombay, some of us knew it, uh, in June. Whereas the Maharashtra mangoes or the South Indian mangoes, uh, Goa mangoes and all that come in even February onwards, it will start. But the, the, the data comes very well and people have been participating in the data collection. And uh, we have some centers in Kashmir, Kashmir, Jammu, there are mango trees, but Kashmir, there are no mango trees. So all these interesting things come, and uh, everybody is part of the, part, part of, part of the uh, sort of uh, uh, sharing the excitement. Uh, so this is some, I, I don't want to, I think this is the same thing in February, January, February, March. So students collectively do this mapping, and they get engaged in that. So uh, people's uh, the, uh, science type of thing, where even the nail regeneration study is uh, on, on like that, mosquito mapping, and several other things. I think students themselves are coming up with this, schools and colleges are coming up with their own ideas, and which gets developed because of the networking. Uh, this is a very clumsy uh, 
figure, but I just wanted to make it as a clumsy one. This is a very interesting stuff that has happened. You can see a sort of graph that is some two peaks, uh, one in red and another, another in green. This is the type of thing when students come to Homi Baba Center and uh, uh, this is school, school students. Uh, when, they, when they do something and we ask them to go to the board and just start discussing it, other people start asking questions and clarifications. So this study was um, the fruit fly. It's some of the students, uh, this is 7th standard, 8th standard, 9th standard students, along with the BSc students. Now this graph is actually of the 7th, 8th standard students, 7th, 8th, uh, 9th standard students. Uh, I, I don't know whether you can see the graph, but the, what, the most important thing is that the students were trapping fruit flies. Now why fruit flies? Because uh, Drosophila, Drosophila is a fruit fly, which is one of the most powerful models in biology. Uh, almost everybody, you know, starts with genetics and molecular biology, most of the things, uh, developmental biology, etc., they start with the Drosophila. But, and interestingly, Drosophila is there almost everywhere in every, everybody's kitchen. But uh, to associate the Drosophila that they study in their developmental biology or genetics to the fly that is coming in the kitchen is very difficult. So these students were trying to trap the flies and see that whether some of them are Drosophila melanogaster, etc. And the uh, interesting thing is that when they tra 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 started trapping it with a, with a plastic bottle with a banana peel in that, uh, some of them got it, some of them didn't get it, so then they tried to find out, standardize it to find out uh, what time will be or what, which place and what time you'll be getting the maximum number of flies. And uh, when, once they found that a particular place, that will be, they'll be getting flies, then they started keeping it from 6 o'clock to 6 o'clock in the morning to every two hours they change the bottle and uh, uh, try to find out the activity pattern, what time they, they will get maximum number of flies. So the graph is actually that. So they got some two peaks. This, this happened in 2017. 17 February to July, uh, uh, they uh, got two peaks, one at, nine, one, one at 11 o'clock and another at 5 o'clock. 11 o'clock peak was very high. That means large number of flies come at 11 o'clock, get trapped in, at 11 o'clock. When they continued it till July, they found that the, the peak shifts from 11 o'clock to, to 9 o'clock in the morning. And this was in 2017 July. 2017 October when the Nobel Prize was announced, the same area of biological rhythm, circadian rhythm, got the Nobel Prize. And it's no surprise that the 8th standard, 9th standard students claimed that, started, started celebrating that we got the Nobel Prize. Our area got the Nobel Prize. So the, the, the flies that they caught from the wild, from, from their home, from their school, uh, they started culturing it. Uh, along with the BSc students, these are some of the BSc and I think some of them are MSc students also. Uh, and then they started addressing questions, very, very serious questions. Uh, they, of course, I cultured and I'd isolated some native variety of Drosophila melanogaster, which they claim that it's not a variety of Drosophila melanogaster. We'll have to further uh, prove it. But the question they are asking is that whether uh, the if you had to work on Drosophila in, let's say, in some of the central places like TF or CCMB, etc., uh, you get uh, flies from the U.S. and that's the standard stock flies, which you called it as a wild type fly, standard fly. Uh, so these people wanted to see that whether how much different or how much similar the wild type fly will be or the standard fly will be in comparison to the native flies that they are isolating and identifying as Drosophila melanogaster. And they are addressing this, essentially they are addressing a very interesting and very complicated, very, 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 very complex evolution question. I will not go into that detail, so they are, they are working on that. Uh, this is uh, a gully cricket model of Galapagos Island. Now, almost, uh, Everybody, and it has been accepted that uh, evolution is one of the toughest areas where a lot of misconceptions persist in the classroom. And uh, uh, a lot of misconceptions. Uh, one of the reasons is that uh, one doesn't have enough time for discussing this. Other is that a lot of misconception even among teachers and probably scientists. Uh, we, we have a lot of uh, misconceptions. Uh, so, the, the, the tough thing about uh, teaching evolution is that there's no model for evolution, no easy model for evolution, no easy model for Galapagos Islands. So this is a model where you, what they are doing is that they're collecting water sample from uh, um, man, manhole cover, the drainage manhole cover, 
the, most of the drainage manhole cover in the city's municipal areas will, will have uh, some depression. In fact, it is, uh, it is to pull it out the, so that they can go in and clean. So that depression retains water during the rainy, during rainy season, or if there's a garden or something somebody is watering. Uh, so in a road, uh, both the sides, if there are, there are drainage and drainage uh, uh, cover has got this sort of depressions, uh, during rainy season, particularly, one side, if you, if you look at the, the so the, there will be organisms growing in that water when, when, when there is rain uh, or there is moisture. So if you look, uh, their idea is something like, could it be something like uh, Galapagos Islands, like that uh, one island will have some type of organisms, uh, maybe a variant, variant of that will be in another, another island. So they are trying to find out whether this could be a model for uh, Galapagos. So they call it as Pagalapos. Almost somebody said that it's a Pagalpan madness. So I think I, I, I am almost through. So this is a, a case uh, where uh, we are waiting for people to tap it. And uh, incidentally, I think Kaiser uh, Kolkata has got some, some of our friends, I don't know whether she's here. Uh, they have been working on stray dogs. Uh, I think they have some other way of uh, describing it. Uh, Bombay railway stations, if you, you know, Bombay has got a fantastic uh, 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 railway, uh, railway system. Uh, railway stations, if you go, uh, several dogs will be there uh, in most of these places. And 2 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock uh, noon, uh, you will see them sleeping. So some of the students came and told us about it. Uh, uh, this will be an interesting stuff. So we are actually trying to collaborate with ISR Kolkata. Uh, so my topic was actually populating India with STEM spectators, Cube's Gully Cricket model. Uh, some very, uh, this is a snail which is uh, pursuing by itself. Uh, why I showed that is that there is a Cube Movie Makers Club. So students, when they do this, they are also making movies. Uh, they make uh, movies and uh, submit it, present it, and uh, they get awards. Uh, this is a the first thing is a, is a case. Uh, the Northeast uh, DBT Department of Biotechnology has uh, given a lot of money to a large number of schools and colleges uh, grant for biotechnology. Uh, they got a lot of instruments, but they so some of us were there for monitoring and mentoring this uh, uh, scheme. Uh, so they didn't have. Uh, they didn't have an idea how to go about it. You know, they have PCR, thermal cycler, all sorts of things. We've got 15 lakhs rupees and stuff like that they got. So the, one of the things that we suggested them is that why don't you do a DNA extraction? They wanted to do heavy things with the DNA and stuff like that. So we said, why don't you do a, yeah. yeah I, I just take one minute. Uh, uh, do DNA extraction and, uh, uh, and make a movie of it. And we said that make it, Extract the DNA, but don't use things in the lab. Don't use things that is available in the, in the, in the kitchen. And they did that. And then, of course, one of the real problems that some of them raised was that where is the, where's the alcohol? We don't have alcohol. So somebody suggested, why don't you borrow it from your neighbor who, who, who drinks whiskey? So they did that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, all are welcome.